song movie. I wasn't supposed to see it, but it came on TV. In the, in the 70s. It was called Spit on Your Grave. Y'all act like y'all saw it. Don't you front on me. Praise the Lord. But in this movie, these five men, I mean brutally, attacked this woman and left her for dead. The last thing he did was spit on her. Threw over a, a, threw over a train ravine down into a ditch and left her there to the river. Old girl survived. Yes, 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 yes. She got herself together. And she hunted down each one of them one by one. Look at your neighbor. She said, You ain't God. You ain't God. Don't spit on me. She said that seriously. She said, Don't spit on me. Hey. The difference is when God takes you and He begins to groom you for greatness, it's going to seem like sometimes He just turned His back on you. And see, some of us won't tell the truth. You just knew when you married that man, God was going to bless your little marriage, and y'all was going to float off to heaven. But let the truth be told. You looked at God some nights and said, who is this? And take this lying, thieving, whoremongering devil and send it. Shake your head. See, first leg, she go. Betray me, first lady. You just sit there like first lady, and not mother. He just testified. But I tell people all the time, I'm my wife. I've been married to my wife 20 years. I've been her husband for 16. They won't tell the truth like that, mama. I've been her husband for 16. The first four years, the devil had me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Shut up, be quiet. Do what I say. Do hush your mouth. I'm the man of my house, and I'll be a man, I'm a man. First of all, you gotta tell somebody, man, you ain't no man. Right. Be quiet, hush, come here, go away, sit down, be quiet, don't talk when I'm talking, shut your mouth. Like, look at me like this. You don't know my husband, you don't know my heart, you don't care about me, you don't love me. Y'all don't say nothing because I know he's sitting right next to you. You don't love me, you don't care about me, you always see me suffering, leave me alone, you ain't about my dreams, you ain't trying to push me, you ain't trying to help me, you ain't trying to support me. You ain't, and you notice, man, you start talking, you look at you ain't supporting me, wait, hey, watch yourself. <laughs> why you let him real night tell you why she ain't supporting you? You a grown man, support yourself. That's right. I don't know why I just shifted, but let me just throw that nugget in there. <laughs> Fellas, support yourself. Amen. Take your footies off. Stop complaining. That's your wife t-shirt, not yours. Take it off. <laughs> Picture me with a rattle. Look how big I am. <laughs> don't get fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the man. So if you get a rattle for Christmas, don't get mad. But the truth be told, let me let me stop. Let me wrap this up. What I'm saying is, when I see this man of God, and you know we talk all the time. I'm puzzled. I used to be so puzzled. I'm like God, because y'all know we ain't slow. We ain't slow. We 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 done benefit all these churches up in this city. We're not dumb. You sit there now. You hold on. You trying to live right, and you see all this travesty going on. They doing what? Oh my God! Like I mean, the club is nicer. It's so much stuff going on, and you sit there, and it begins to vex your spirit. And then they attack you, cause you ain't down with them. Come on in here. You ain't with. Look, then they start trying to prophesy until you God told you to stay. No. No. That was a ghost sign I seen. Because why would I sit up in somebody's church and die? If I'm going to be in the world, I'm going to go in the world I'm going to tear the world up And I know y'all ain't like sending when you did it But I did When I was out there, I loved doing what I did It made me feel good I didn't know I was going to go to hell and catch fire Nobody told me that I was out to have fun Drinking was fun Lying was fun Matter of fact, we call lying running game Some of y'all sitting next to your wife I have no idea what he's talking about He's a lying I tell you honey, I don't know him no, 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 that's him. He's testifying about himself. 
but the truth be told, you know darn well that when you look at this situation now, by means many pastors like us should be in cycle rolls. We should have thrown a towel. Listen, because one thing we're not going to do is go to hell for you. And we'll come for you, knock on your door, try to test, get you back into the house. But God is raising us up now to this season now. And I know that's why I'm celebrating you, man. Of God. You're reaching that point in your growth where now God is saying, let him go. I'm not going to beg you to come get something to drink. You know we in the desert. You'll come looking for me. Amen. Before I come looking for you And then what happens is When you're training and you're going through your Because guess what, if he spit on you He spit on everything connected to you And they got offended and said It's not enough going on here I'm going over here where they allow me to sleep around My Lord Boy it's quiet You thought I was going to talk about candy canes For Christmas didn't you 25 years got a testimony of victory all over his life let God spit in his face so he can get sight so he can see what God is going to do with his next because I hate to tell you this, you're still blind unless you've been spit on now somebody once again look at your name and say God please spit on me and I can't I ain't going to get all into it because the blind man really kind of went off that's why when you see a pastor snap don't get mad at your pastor the, the people kept asking him, what did he do? Didn't I tell y'all? He spit on the ground, made some clay, and rubbed it on my... I went to the pool and washed myself. Now I can see. Then he slipped up and said, why don't y'all know? My Lord, you better say something. The Pharisee said, you little ingrate. You was born in sin, you little nasty. You, you, anybody, somebody looked at you like they were so holy than thou. Yeah. But you knew their story. Uh -huh. The part they tried to hide. Uh -huh. They looked at him and said, how dare you and you little filthy. You can't tell us. We, 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 we saved. You not. And I'm going to tell you something. Some of the greatest truths will come to you from people who are struggling in their mess. I, listen, everybody that wear a cross ain't telling the truth. Yeah. Let me get ready to wrap this up. And I love the man. He said, he said, you, won't you go ask him? They went and got the boy mama and his papa. I want the kind of blessing where you go get my mother and my father. Now they both dead. I want to see you pull that off. But for 25 years, I know you can't lie to me. I know that there have been times you say, God, what did I do to you? I've been in some of these places. I'm like, but you know that's part of your maturity. Even though you said, I don't sweat with nobody else, God, I ain't paying that no mind. You do pay it some mind. When you know that every word that comes out of your mouth can bring somebody out of darkness into the marvelous light. And that people of this generation choose darkness over light. It will bother your heart. I'm not covering it. It's bothering me because I know over here, you can get what you need. Yeah. And I pray to God we reach a point where people stop Ooh. joining churches because of choir yeah. and political positions. Yeah. Join the church because you're not trying to go to hell. Yeah. I should do a whole teaching on what hell really like. So you'll really step your game up. I know that's right. Yeah. How old are you, sir? What? I'll be 50 next year. Let me shake your hand. I'm having an all white party. Christ. Right. You're welcome to come. Come on now. 50 years old. That's around the age where you ain't playing no more. That's right. I don't care if Richard Smallwood is your praise and worship leader. Donnie McClurkin is your assistant pastor. And Bishop Jakes is your pastor. The minute they start talking crazy, as for me and my house, we out. Because I'm not sitting in your church going to hell. So ask yourself this question. If this man of God who we know integrity is impeccable, but yet and still growing everything, it seems like a grind. How can you have water in the desert and nobody comes to drink? Come on now. Except the Lord has his hand in front of your house. Come on now. You say so. But keeps telling you to get ready. Prophet after prophet, get ready. And every year, nothing happens. Wow. Y'all better listen, Noah. Every year, nothing happens. You better listen, Noah. Every year, nothing happens. I know we keep saying this year is my year, but as God is my witness, I truly believe that 2016 going to be bananas for my life. I'm trying to tell somebody.
There's water in this house. Amen. This is a desert. They having fashion shows in the desert. They inviting choirs to the desert and think they got water. It won't be for some till it's too late that they realize they've been having church in the desert. You say, Pastor, how can you tell your church is a desert? Listen, could we stop acting like when we got saved, we got done? I was real smart in the street, amen? I, some of y'all really not street smart, it's cool. Call me, I'll tell you. Well, how's it that we're getting it? If you put your money, if you have right now, who can use a, 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 a $10 million blessing right now? Raise your hand. Well, you cool, Mama? Can I get a little more? Meet me at the service. I really need to talk to you. I got some issues. If you get a $10 million check, and it's legitimate, you go to deposit that, because you know you can't just go to the corner store and bust that. All right, y'all know that, right? Tell your neighbor you can't bust that at the corner store. You don't want to see what they're going to take out of that check. I'll cash that for you. You put it in my account. Amen. But you're not going to take the very thing that's going to cause your entire destiny to shift and put it in Mike and Mike's bank. If you got TD on one side and Mike and Mike on the other side, why would you take that check and say TD asked for too many fees? Mike and Mike just starting out. I'm going to put my money over here. And then you go up uh, seven days, seven to ten days, as they tell you, you wait 20 days. Punch in your little pen now. No balance. You what? Because you know you hit that thing again. Even though the thing clearly states that there's nothing in your account. That's a mistake. No, it ain't no mistake. You don't darn well. What would you do? You will go to that bank and saying it as politely as I can, all daisies will break out. Somebody better tell me where my money at. And you ain't gonna be talking this prison, Lord. This is like speech you're I'm having a very didactic situation over here. I deposited ten million dollars in your bank. Approximately, uh, let me see, uh, about, about 20 days ago, and I know that you have a seven to 10 day policy. I just would like to inquire concerning what you did with my money. That is not how you're gonna go up in there. You're gonna go to the store, get a whole pack of bubblicious. First of all, we your manager, because my money missing up in here. Somebody go get my money. Somebody. Yes, sir. Will you fight for your money? Yes, sir. Riddle me this, but you will go to a church, give up all your money, pass the eye on your wife, deacons hitting on your wife. It's all right, babe, I got you. <laughs> you know ain't nobody up in that joint right, but you sit there and you put your deposit in there every day. And I want to tell you something, my mama taught me birds of a feather. You might not be one now. But around year number four, don't be surprised your eyes start roaming. Oh, 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 really? If you're in the debt of iniquity, don't you think that it won't vex your spirit? That's right, that's right, that's right. And so you got to understand, you have to be the same way about that 10 million that you are about your, about your spiritual life. Thank you, baby. About your spiritual life. If you don't begin to understand the value of what you have in your hand, you have your life in your hands. And that's why I tell you, hold your peace. Because when they come, they're coming to get something to drink. And they're going to be people who God has spit on. And they're not going to understand why. Because now that they've been spit on, they got to go to the place to get their healing. And this be that place. You might be standing in the pool of storm tonight by yourself. And if you know you need God to lead you to that pool or somebody that's going to take you there. Matter of fact, let me transfer that question. Is there anybody here, God, got somebody in your life that led you to the pool so you can get your healing? Yeah. Jesus walked to the pool. He said, go. Uh -huh. Some of us need to thank God for shepherds who know how to take us to the water so we can get a healing instead of trying to give it to us themselves. And so I thank God tonight. Oh, I feel God in here. I can have church all by myself. I preach myself into a tizzy. Because I'm telling you, somebody need to say, God, I know you spit on me. God, I, I ain't like it at all. God spit on me. Then sent me. He spit. Then say go. You still standing there like what? 
Look at your neighbor and say, I got to go. I got to go. She meant that too. She said, listen, it is quarter, quarter to six. Jesus called me. I got to go. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hear me, hear me clearly. Sometimes, and anybody that knows me know I love to hoop with the best of them. But the Lord has dropped a series of messages in my spirit that has settled me. And if you truly begin to understand, and I speak to this man of God because y'all don't know the same things that affect us affect y'all. And you, you, I know you heard me tonight. There are some things God is going to do that's going to be outside of your box to get you the way you got to go. And something going to seem so disrespectful that if you're not careful to understand who's in your presence, because apparently the blind man didn't know Jesus, but he knew enough to know that he was able to do what he was going to do. So he was not offended by the spit. And I believe the situations in your life have brought you to a point where you're no longer offended. You just want God to do what he's going to do. So, Lord, I believe that 2016 is going to be the year I'm going to let you do whatever you got to do so I can see where I got to go. Is there anybody here that you ain't got another year to waste? I got to get to my destiny. My resources are there. My peace is there. I don't have another year to wander in the wilderness with nobody. Spit on me, Lord. Then send me. I promise you, I will find my way to the pool. And I thank God that even in this place, there's a remnant in this city where the pool still got fresh water. Somebody give God praise for everlasting life. And Apostle Warren and say, Apostle, keep the water. Listen, I'm going to get out your way. But I, one thing I'm not, let me help you out. I am not concerned with you being tired. It doesn't matter to me. Amen. Because you weren't tired when you was creeping. Amen. What I do know is that there's somebody in this room that you felt as if God was just a little too harsh. You don't understand his will and his purpose for your life. And you, one thing you don't want to do in 2016 is perpetrate. I'm, I took off 12 days from work. I'm starting tomorrow. I'll be at my sanctuary. Because I've reached a place, bruh, where I don't need another CD, another motivational speech. It's too, I'm like Moses. I want to know why the children are still in bondage. So I got to go to the mountain and have a meeting with God because I sense something in my spirit. So I took time off because I don't have another year to waste. And you know you got to move when the grace runs out. Of the place that you're in. That's who I want to pray for right now. You need God to do it. You haven't been, listen, you haven't been feeling it like you know you should. It's time to shift. And if that's you, please come. I'm not going to take long. The praying will be about 30 seconds. But if you know that's you, now you can ignore God all you want. I'm telling you, I don't have another day to waste. Another year to waste. I'm not living. Listen, faith, faith that is not practiced is not faith at all. I'm tired of people promising me a new year. You don't need more money. You need your heart made right. You don't need another blessing. You need to, you need to ask the Lord to help you forgive those that you hurt. And that have hurt you also. If that's you, come to this altar. I want to pray for you. Because I want you to be able to go to the pool and get your healing. Amen. 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 If that's you, come on. Come on. I don't, come on, let's do this. It's that time, man. I need God to break through. I need God to break in my life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. I, time, play time is over. Play time is over. I need God to do a new thing in my life. It's nothing worse than being the walking dead. I'm not trying to impress nobody with my praise. I'm not trying to impress nobody with how strong I can be. Sometimes you get tired of being strong and you just need God to break you out. Sometimes you get tired of being wandering in the wilderness and I told you there's water in this house. So if you want to get some water, come get the water because I'm telling you, your whole family's destiny is placed on this next Next move in your life. I don't have another season to wait, sir. I don't have, listen, as a matter of fact, if I don't shift the storm, this next storm just might take me out. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't care how much you pop a lie to yourself and say the storm won't take you out. If you don't submit to the will of God, come on, come on. how can you complain that you're drowning but every time the boat come by, the rescue boat, you don't jump in. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Not 
God another year. And I'm, I'm mature enough to know as a man of God that some folk are comfortable where they are. 